It isn't always exciting discovering a new location. Sometimes there are great horrors hiding in the shadows, dark secrets that will make your skin crawl. So today, I will be listing five disturbing locations in Skyrim. Let's get into it. Starting off with number five, we have Ranvig's Fast. This can be found in the mountains to the south of Morthal. On the outside, there are subjugated ghosts who will attack you, and as they do, they apologize for it. They don't want to. Their souls bend to the will of some kind of master. Sorry, yes, this isn't what I want. So you make your way inside, and eventually you're going to discover a hidden word wall. But just before reaching it, it is possible to fall through a trap door. And if you do, you'll find yourself in a cage surrounded by dead bodies. And watching you is Sil, the Warlock. This is a necromancer who takes great pleasure in luring people into his trap, conducting various painful experiments on them, and then enslaving their souls once they've been killed. And all around you are cages and cages of corpses of the people, even dogs, that he's murdered. Now to give you an idea of just how sick this man's mind really is, in his journal he writes this. The last one to fall in broke both his arms and legs. He proceeded to float there and eventually drown. If it weren't for the water, I would have had a great time twisting his mind until I decided to end him. So if you are brave enough to face him, don't add to one of his experiments. Number four, we have Frostflow Lighthouse. This can be found southeast of Dawnstar. Right when you walk inside, you're immediately gripped by a bloody death scene. A woman, Ramadi, with a Falmer axe sticking out of her stomach, blood stains littering the floor. Now, if you do some investigating, there are journals you can find that are going to lead you into the cellar, and as you progress through this location, a dark story quickly unfolds. See, a red guard man, Hod, with his wife and two children, purchased the lighthouse as a home. A few days after being there, strange noises started coming from the cellar, so Hod went into town to buy traps for just whatever it may be. Well, on his return, his wife's body was found in that same position we just found it, and both of his kids had been dragged into the tunnels beneath the house. You see, there was an entire Falmer network of caves below them that they had no idea about. So Hod, in this mad frenzy, went below to find them, but very quickly being overpowered, he was captured and then thrown into a cage. Well, in there, in that cage, he was reunited with Sudai, his daughter. Unfortunately, it was just her, though. His son, Manny, had already been killed. Now, fearing the very worst for the both of them, Hod gave his daughter a dagger that he had hiding on him in case simply staying alive ever became too much to bear. And sadly enough, it was in fact used for that same purpose. Hod had been dragged off to be fed to a chorus reaper, and Sudai, trying to avoid that same painful fate, used the dagger to just end her life and kill herself. And to this day, Hod's remains can still be found in the belly of that same chorus reaper. Number three, we have the abandoned prison. This can be found northwest of Fort Amal. This was an imperial controlled prison that because of its precarious location being built on a river was victim to certain dangers, one of the most obvious being flooding. So when you go inside, cracks and spills can still be found in the walls. And by reading some of the notes left over, you'll learn that a storm had been brewing and was quickly getting worse. If given long enough, it could wash away the entire fort. The guards realized this and were ordered to either kill all the prisoners or let them drown. It didn't really matter as long as they got out alive. Now, at the same time, the prisoners knew the flooding was getting worse, so they came up with this plan to rush and then overtake the guards once they had been distracted by the water. Thing is, neither party knew what they were in for. As the revolt was taking place, the leaks they had just become too powerful. Guards and prisoners alike were met with crashing waves sweeping them against the walls, and without enough time to navigate the halls and, and get back up to the surface, they couldn't make it out alive. All of them drowned. There was even a trap door some of the prisoners were escaping out of, but they still didn't have enough time. Their skeletons can still be found rotting in that same passage. Now the ghosts of the dead, of those who met such a terrible death, still wander the cells of this very prison. Number two, we have Apocrypha. This is the Daedric Prince Hermaeus Mora's Plane of Oblivion, a realm of the world's forbidden knowledge. And you can go there whenever you read one of the black books in Solstheim with the Dragonborn DLC. Now, there aren't any specific stories of someone, you know, dying here. Just that the very act of being here is a nightmare. The plane is an endless sea of toxic black liquid. Oily tentacles burst from these pools, sometimes to whip at you when you get too close. The sky is infected with hazy green swirls that just drift, directionless. Hallways stretch and retract as you walk down them, depth being just a mere illusion. It's enough to drive you crazy, but as if the atmosphere wasn't bad enough, there are horrifying creatures that inhabit the darkness. Seekers, hideous floating daedra with tentacles as faces that can turn invisible, even duplicate copies of themselves while in combat. Also lurkers, beasts that emerge from the liquid with frightening strength. In this mad plane of oblivion, most who come here seeking hidden knowledge are trapped here for an eternity. 
And number one, we have Ingvild. This is an isolated cave to the east of Dawnstar. As you progress through it, you're going to be attacked by Draugr. But the thing is, you notice something very quickly. All of the Draugr are female. Why would that be? So you keep going, and you can find multiple journals by a high elf named Rondel. And as you read them, his secrets become quite clear. He's a necromancer who raises the dead, and then performs perverted sexual acts on them. He is a necrophiliac, and he's isolated himself in this cave so he can't be harmed. While building an army of powerful female warriors, he also gets to fulfill his wildest, darkest fantasies. To add to this, you'll learn that he's always had a thing for the young milkmaids back in Dawnstar, and lately, his servants have been able to capture some of them and bring them to him. So now he's been able to experiment on them, and then when he raises them back from the dead, they're not Draugr, but they come back as ghosts, and their company gives him a whole new level of pleasure. His greatest dreams, they're all coming true. Now, referring back to the first milkmaid that he finds, he writes this. Her body is here next to me as I write this. Funny. Her eyes are still so full of life. Perhaps I will try a new experiment tonight using fresher materials. And there you have it. Five disturbing locations in Skyrim. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me, what do you think is the most disturbing place in all of Skyrim? All right, thank you very much for watching, and now I can confidently say I'm going to Whiterun, I'm going to the temple, and I'm just going to relax. Those places, they can all corrupt your mind if you let them.